August 1920, the account of Giolitti's arrival in Bardonecchia. Just after the war, when Italy was going through extreme economic and social upheavals, protests and riots, a 78-year-old Giovanni Giolitti was called to govern the country for the fifth time. The news of the Honorable Giolitti's arrival in Bardonecchia can be read in La Stampa newspaper on the 16th of August 1920 and also mentions the elderly statesman's concerns in his speech to the people of Bardonecchia. Bardonecchia's warm welcome to the President. Yesterday the President left Turin for Bardonecchia where he will be staying for some time and he has everything organized for direct contact with Rome. The President takes his place in the carriage which has been added to the standard modern train. Badonecchia was all set to celebrate the president's arrival and the entire town was decorated in bunting for the occasion. Nearby villages were planning to depart en masse to attend with holidaymakers planning special celebrations, but the close advisors of the president advised against this, because they knew he was not keen on extravagant events. The rain limited the influx of people from the surrounding suburbs, but it did not deter the hordes of holiday makers and valley dwellers from gathering at the station to applaud and welcome the man who was considered, and liked to be called, a citizen of Bardonecchia, even though he was not born there and did not have any homes or property in the area. A sea of people of every age and social status surrounded the presidential carriage in a warm and enthusiastic ovation. The president, who was the first to alight from the train, was completely encircled and almost suffocated by the crowd's show of affection. Amidst much applause, the throng repeatedly shouted Jolita's name whilst he frantically shook hands with his friends. A car was waiting outside the station to take the president to his modest residence, where his wife Rosa was waiting for him, in a house owned by the local council secretary that Giolitti had been renting in the summer for quite some time, but he preferred to go on foot, surrounded by his friends and admirers. Despite the threat of more rain, as it crossed the town, the crowds became denser and denser. He walked through a town adorned in bunting ready for festivity. Every window was crammed with people and cries of Viva Giolitti, long live Giolitti, filled the air. Along the way, the president stops to talk with his friends, he takes an interest in Bardonecchia and asks for news on the people he has not seen. He reminisces about the past. In the center of the town, a group of children from the Alpine hills are standing in line with their teacher before them. There is much waving of flags and they call out to the president cries that are warmly echoed by the crowd. Rosa Giolitti is waiting for her husband at the door of their humble abode, the simplicity of which shocked his colleagues in Rome. There is much fanfare as Rosa and the president meet. The two names become confused amidst the enthusiastic applause that ripples through the crowd. The increasingly louder hurrahs and cries continue until the Honorable Giolitti appears on the balcony. With a firm, clear voice filled with emotion, he says, Thank you, fellow citizens of Bardonecchia, for the esteem and affection you have given me for the past 18 years, which has never faltered, even in the saddest of moments. I now have an arduous mission to face, which I hope to complete for the benefit of the country. The trust of the people of Babdonecchia serves as an example of how all of us can help the government rebuild Italy, so we can reclaim the destiny promised to us by history, the sacrifices made, the constant and unwavering patriotism. Long live Babdonecchia! A loud applause salutes the president along with warm-hearted cheers for Rosa, then the crowds disperse. The authorities make their way back to the station for their return to Turin.